So now that we have seen uh, the definition of measurable functions and we have also seen some basic properties of measurable functions. So it is now a good time to have some intuitive idea of what a measurable function should be and uh, what pointwise convergence of measurable functions uh, should be. So this is uh, encapsulated in what are called Littlewood's principles. We have already seen one Littlewood uh, principle when we were defining Lebesgue measurability which said that every uh, measurable set, so I am putting measurable in brackets because uh, the idea is to write that every set is almost open and this is what we used to define Lebesgue measurability. And in fact, uh, we can also say something stronger which is that every set is almost a finite union of boxes or in the uh, one dimensional case intervals. So here again uh, there is some catch which is that it should be measurable set with finite measure. So it is actually a nice exercise to show that every measurable set with finite measure uh, can be approximated with respect to the symmetric difference uh, with a finite union of uh, boxes and so that the measure of the symmetric difference of the set with this finite union of boxes is less than or equal to some given epsilon. So in this way Littlewood's first principle gives you an idea, an intuitive idea of what a measurable set should look like and what a measurable set with finite measure should look like. So then Littlewood's second principle says that every function is almost continuous, almost continuous and here also the catch is that it should be a measurable function or we will see that it also works if it is a Lebesgue integrable function. So once we define what is a Lebesgue integrable function, we will see that these functions are almost continuous. So of course we have to make precise what are these, what is meant by these almost, but we will see that it is up to some epsilon or uh, up to some finite tolerance in the measures. Uh, we have to state these uh, properties uh, for being almost continuous and almost open. So the second principle says that every measurable function or a Lebesgue integrable function is almost continuous. So you can view it, view a measurable function as a continuous function outside a set of negligible measure. On the other hand, uh, the third principle says that every uh, convergent sequence convergent sequence of functions is uniformly convergent. So again there is a catch which is that it should be a pointwise convergent sequence of measurable functions of measurable functions and here uh, in general one can only uh, have uniform convergence locally uh, which means that it will be uniformly convergent once you uh, take uh, the intersection with a bounded uh, set, bounded Euclidean ball. So these <coughs> three Littlewood's principles gives us some idea of what one, how one should think about pointwise convergent of convergence of uh, measurable functions, how one should think about absolutely integrable or measurable functions and how one should think about uh, measurable sets. So in this lecture we will see 
the third point which is that every pointwise convergent sequence of measurable functions is uniformly convergent. So, this is known as this result when you make it precise is known as Egorov's theorem and we will see what is the uh, Egorov's theorem and we will try to prove it in this lecture. So, let us see the statement of Egorov's theorem. So, we start with a measure space x b, b mu and we take a sequence of measurable functions f n uh, defined on a measurable set E with finite measure mu E and assume that f n converges pointwise to some function f on E. Then Egorov's theorem states that given epsilon greater than 0, there exists a measurable function A epsilon which is a subset of E, measurable subset of E such that the, the measure, so here it should be mu, measure of uh, E minus A epsilon is less than or equal to E, uh, less than or equal to epsilon which means that uh, the complement of A epsilon inside E has very small measure and F n converges to F uniformly on E. So, recall that F n converges to F uniformly on A epsilon means that for any epsilon greater than 0. Uh, so, this epsilon is different from the given epsilon. So, let me take something else some eta greater than 0. Uh, there exists a number natural number n such that let me write n naught such that uh, modulus of f n x minus f x is less than eta for all n greater than or equal to n naught and x in a epsilon. So, the point is that here the difference between uniform convergence and pointwise convergence is that we can choose n this n naught this is independent independent of the chosen point x. So, this holds for all x in uh, this is for all x in this set A epsilon. So, we see that outside a set of uh, measure less than or equal to epsilon we have uniform convergence and this is what Littlewood's third principle uh, says that every pointwise convergent sequence of measurable functions is uh, uniformly convergent. So, of course, we have to make sure that our uh, assumptions are correct which is that it should be this convergence should be on a measurable set with finite measure and then we can make the statement that it is uniformly convergent outside a uh, set of uh, me measure less than or equal to epsilon. So, let us see the proof of Egorov's theorem. Proof. So, we define for each n a natural number and k a natural number uh, E n k which is the set of all points in E such that the modulus of f j x minus f x is less than 1 over n 1 over n for all j greater than k. So, we are looking at those points which become close to for which f j x becomes close to f x for all j greater than 
k up to a tolerance of 1 by n. So, this uh, E n k is a measurable set for each measurable set for each uh, k greater than 1 and n greater than 1 because first of all this is uh, f j minus f f is a measurable function because f j's are all measurable so uh, this uh, f j minus f is a measurable function on the other hand it is a composition with the continuous function which is the modulus therefore the modulus of f j minus f is also continuous is also measurable so we are taking the inverse image so e n k is the inverse image of the function f j minus f mod of the set of the interval 0 to 1 by n which is open at 1 by n and of course this is a Borel set and so this is a measurable set. Of course one should take the intersection with E because uh, the E n k s should be a subset of E. Nevertheless E is measurable so E n k s are all measurable. Now we fix n, fix n, then we have that E n k is a subset of E n k plus 1 because if uh, this inequality, if this inequality holds for j greater than k, then it also holds for j greater than k plus 1 and so we have this inclusion of E n k inside E n k plus 1. On the other hand, since f n converges to f pointwise, so any x in E uh, lies in E n k for some k. Fixing n, we can always find a k large enough such that x belongs to uh, E and k because f n converges pointwise to f. So, this uh, difference f f j x minus f x modulus is going to be less than 1 by n for a large enough k. So, we have that this implies that E is a subset of the union of all these e and k's k equal to 1 to infinity and since and since e and k is a subset of e by definition we are only taking points in e which implies that e is actually equal to the union of all these sets E and K. So, this is for any fixed N for any fixed N greater than or equal to 1. So, now I am going to use the upward monotone convergence theorem, upward monotone convergence theorem which states that the measure of E is equal to the limit as k tends to infinity of these sets m e and k sorry mu e and k this is the statement for the upward monotone convergence theorem this implies that given epsilon greater than 0 there exists a number a number k which I will write k as k n belonging to the natural numbers such that 
sorry, given n greater than 0, given n a natural number, there exists a number k n such that we have that the measure of the set E minus E n k n is less than or equal to 1 over 2 to the power n because of this uh, limit condition uh, because of this upward monotone convergence theorem we have this and this is nothing but mu e minus mu e n k n. So, by construction by construction we have that for any x belong to e n k n for some n some n greater than or equal to 1, we have that the modulus of f j x minus f x is less than 1 over n for all j greater than k n. This is how we define the sets e n k and so this holds by our construction of the sets e n k. Now, choose capital N in the natural numbers such that 1 over 2 to the power n minus 1 is less than or equal to epsilon. So, given epsilon greater than 0, we choose a natural number n capital N such that 1 over 2 to the power n minus 1 is less than or equal to epsilon and note that 1 over 2 to the power n is nothing but the sum from n to infinity 1 over 2 to the power k and this is less than or equal to epsilon. So, we put now a epsilon is now defined as the intersection of the sets n greater than or equal to capital N of E n k n which means that any point in A epsilon lies in all of these E n k n's for n greater than or equal to this capital N. So, then we can estimate the measure of E minus A epsilon which is equal to the, the measure mu sorry which is equal to the measure <coughs> mu of E minus the intersection of n greater than or equal to capital N E n k n and this is equal to the measure of E intersection n greater than or equal to capital N E n k n complement and this is equal to the measure of E intersection the union n greater than or equal to n E n k n complement which can be written as the union n greater than or equal to capital N E minus E n k n and this can be made smaller than the sum n equal to capital N to infinity. So, this is uh, these are from n to infinity. So, capital N to infinity measure of E minus E n k n and each of them was less than or equal to 1 over 2 to the power n. So, this is less than or equal to the sum n equal to capital N to infinity 1 over 2 to the power n and this is precisely 1 over 2 to the power n minus 1 and we have chosen this to be less than epsilon. So, on this uh, outside this set A epsilon, the complement of A epsilon in uh, E has measured less than or equal to epsilon. So, now we claim that that F n converges to F uniformly on A epsilon. So, in other words, given eta greater than 0, there exists a number n naught 
in capital N such that modulus of f j or f n let us say f n x minus f x is less than or equal to eta for all n greater than or equal to n naught and for all x in A epsilon. So, this is the definition of uniform convergence for points uh, for the set uh, on the set A epsilon. Uh, now, recall that A epsilon was in fact the intersection of these E and K n's, which means that if x belongs to A epsilon, then x belongs to E n K n for all n greater than capital N. And we have that f j x minus f x modulus is less than 1 over n for all j greater than k n and this holds for all n. So, this is for all n, all n greater than or equal to n. There exists a number k n such that, such that this holds because x belongs to E n k n. And so, now if given eta greater than 0, we choose choose n greater than or equal to capital N such that 1 over n is less than this eta and set n not to be uh, this k n that we get from uh, fixing an n and then getting k n. So, we have for any x in A epsilon that the modulus of f j x minus f x is less than 1 over n naught, uh, 1 over n which is less than eta and this holds for all j greater than k n which is n naught and this proves that f n converges to f uniformly on A epsilon. So, we have shown that uh, given a uh, pointwise convergence sequence on a set of measurable set of finite measure, then we can find an exceptional set A epsilon. Uh, we can find a set A epsilon on which it converges uniformly and the exceptional set for which it does not converge uniformly as me a measure as small as we want uh, for a given tolerance level epsilon. On the other hand, we, we remark here that we cannot upgrade, upgrade um, to the case mu e minus a epsilon equal to 0 and says that f n converges to f uniformly on a epsilon because we take this example functions defined on r and taking values on r and in fact, we do not need it to be defined on the whole real line, we will only define it for 0, 1 and it will also take values in 0 plus infinity. So, f n of x is defined to be 1 over n x for x belonging to the interval 0, 1 which is open at 0 and closed at 1 and 0 for x equal to 0. So, we have defined a sequence of functions uh, on a set of uh, measurable set of finite measure which is 0, 1 and these are all um, non-negative unsigned uh, measurable functions. 
so we can show that fn converges to the zero function on zero one this is point wise this is point wise convergence now suppose that suppose that there exists a set a so here there is no dependence on epsilon so you can remove it here suppose that there is there exists such a set a uh, on which fn converges to f uniformly and the measure of um, e minus a is equal to 0 but if we have uniform convergence then uh, there exists an n not belonging to n says that, <coughs> says that f n x the modulus of f n x minus 0 so can forget about that so just the modulus of of, of f n x <coughs> is less than or equal to epsilon for all x uh, in a so for any x for any epsilon for any epsilon greater than 0 we have we can find an n not independent of uh, the the point x says that this holds for all n greater than or equal to n not and for all x belonging to a but the modulus of f and x cannot be small if you take if uh, x can is taken to be 1 over n not then the modulus of f n not x is equal to 1 over n not times 1 over n not which is simply 1 and so <coughs> so it violates this condition we get a contradiction uh, therefore the measure of the set e minus the set on which uh, there is uniform convergence is at least greater than or equal to 1 over n naught therefore we cannot hope to have uh, measure 0 um, the exceptional set to be measure 0 outside of which there is uniform convergence.